So yesterday we talked about <coughs> fractions and we looked at our fraction models and we also looked at decimals and we looked at those decimal grids and things like that. And I told you the reason we were doing that is because we were going to have to start putting rational numbers on a number line and having to compare them. We talked about integers earlier this week. Um, rational numbers are different than integers because rational numbers, a rational number can be an integer, a fraction, or a decimal. Okay, whereas integers were only whole numbers in their opposite, rational numbers are whole numbers, fractions, and decimals, and their opposite. Okay, so it kind of encompasses everything, just about it. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to work on doing is, it's kind of a review from yesterday, but figuring out how to label a number line when it's not labeled already for you. So we look at um, example A, and we want to know, like, where is the heart, where is the smiley face, and where is the star located? And they've labeled part of our number line, but they haven't labeled every tick mark of our number line. And so yesterday we talked about how we could identify what each tick mark represents. Do you remember how to do that? What do we have to look at? Count the whole spaces between the whole, number. between the whole number, and we count the spaces. So we want to look at the whole number. So I'm going to look from 0 to 1. Okay? How many spaces are here between 0 and 1? Five. Five. So that means that our each space is going to represent how much? One fifth. So like I can go in here and start labeling one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Then I have a whole. After the whole is what? I've gone a whole and then one more space. So it's one and one fifth. The next one I've gone a whole and now I've gone, so I've gone one whole and I've gone two spaces, so it's one and two fifths. So what's the next one going to be? One and, one and three fifths and then one and four fifths and then we have one and five fifths which is equal to two holes. And then we have the opposite side of zero and those are going to be our negatives. It's basically a mirror image of the first half except it's negative. So we have negative one fifth, negative two fifths, negative three fifths, negative four fifths. Then we have negative one. After negative one is going to be what? Negative one and one fifth. Negative one and one fifth. Then we're going to have negative one and two fifths. Then negative one and Three fifths and negative one and four fifths. I'll let you take a second to get that all numbered. So where is the star located? Where's my smiley face? Negative two fifths. And then the heart? Negative one and two fifths. If I were wanting to put these in order from least to greatest, where would I start? Over all the way to the left side, because remember the left side is the the less. So I would start all the way to the left. But what shapes first when all when it's all the way to the left? The heart, which is negative one and three fifths. And then it's the smiley face, and then it's the star. Okay. All right. Looking at example B. What is this divided into? Two. If you look from zero to whole, how many spaces are there? Two. Tenths. 
So I could write this as one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four. Well, we talked about tenths yesterday. How else can we write tenths instead of as a fraction? Decimal. As a decimal. So, how would I write one tenth as a decimal? Negative zero or no, zero, zero point one. Then it's <coughs> zero. We have two tenths. Then it's three tenths and four tenths. Five tenths, seven, eight, nine, and then we're at a whole. <coughs> so not only can you put fractions on a number line, you can put decimals. decimals. Okay. So on the opposite is that zero, we would have, I'm just going to write it in decimal form here. Negative one tenth, negative two tenths. I wanted to put these in order from least to greatest. What shape is going to come first? Man. The, smiley the smiley face. And where's the smiley face located? The negative, negative nine tenths. Negative nine tenths. Then I have the heart, and it's located negative. at negative, negative one tenth. And then I have the star that's located at positive five tenths. Alright, so far we're good, right? Okay. It's kind of what we did yesterday when we talked about some stuff. Here it wants us to graph the fraction and its opposite. Okay, and they've got two different number lines they want us to do this on. So the first number line, your first step is to label your number line. So you have to know how much it's sectioned up. How much does each space represent in the first number line? Thirds. Thirds, right? Because how many spaces do I have? One, two, three. So it's going to represent thirds. So here, one space is one third. Two spaces from zero is two thirds. Three spaces from zero would be three thirds, which is equal to the whole. And then on the opposite side, I'm one space from zero, so it's negative one third. I'm two spaces from zero, so it's negative two thirds. And then it would be negative three thirds, which is equal to a negative whole. And so it's pretty easy when it's like this to find where one third is located. Right there, right? What is the opposite of one third? Negative. Negative one third. Beautiful. There's your opposites right there. But what happens when they want me to put one third on a number line that's not broken up into thirds? You have to break it up. What is this broken up into? How many six. spaces are there between on zero and a whole? Six. So you can six. So this is. One six, two six, three six, four six, 
five, six, and six holes. Or six, six, which is a hole. And then I have negative one, six, negative two, six, negative three, six, negative four, six, negative five, six, and a negative hole. Where does one third go when we're talking about six? Alright, if I'm going to one from one third and I'm trying to get to a denominator of six, what am I doing to three to get to six? Multiplying by what? Two times two. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, so I have to multiply by two. So my numerator is going to be 2. So like Eli was saying, it would be 2, 6. And if you don't believe me, I've got my whole fraction models over here. Here's 1 third. Okay. Here's 1 6. And here's another 6. And aren't they equal? 2 6 is equal to 1 third. Okay, so sometimes we may have to convert the denominators so that we can plot it. So we've got 2, 6, and the opposite of 2, 6 is negative 2, 6. One thing you'll notice is we're saying 2, 6 equals 1 third. So that means I should be able to group the, by two sixes, by two spaces, and get a total of three groups if I looked at this number line. So there's two six, there's two six, there's two six. How many sections is that? So can't, it's divided also into thirds. Okay? All right, turn your page. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the same thing with decimals. We've got decimals, but it's not skip counting by tenths, it's skip counting by what? Two. Two tenths. So we go from zero to two tenths, ne the next one's going to be what? For skip counting by two tenths, it would be four tenths. The next one would be six tenths, and then eight tenths, and then a whole, or ten tenths, which is equal to a whole. So then the opposite side, if we have negative two tenths, then we have negative four tenths, then we have negative six tenths, and negative eight tenths. So if I plot negative 4 tenths, what's the opposite of negative 4 tenths? Positive 4 tenths. Is everybody good with being able to label a number line? Looking at the spaces and able to number a number line. Okay. Next thing we got. They want us to compare fractions and mixed numbers on the number line. First thing we got to do, before we even look at the numbers, is our number line filled out? Mm -hmm. No. So we need to fill out our number line. So what is it being divided into? One, two, three, four, five, six, six spaces. So it's going up by a fraction of six. So I got one six, two six, three six, four six, five six, and then a whole. And then the opposite would be negative one six, negative two six, negative three six. 
they enforce it, then you will find it. All right, we're comparing negative one six and negative two thirds. So we're going to graph negative one six on the number line, and now we got to graph negative two thirds. <coughs> well, we're working with six. So if I'm going from two thirds to six times two, so what is it going to be? Two thirds is also equal to. Four six. So negative four six. All right. Which one is further away from zero? Negative four six. Negative four six. The further away from zero it is, the less it is. So if I'm comparing negative one six to negative four six. One six is bigger because it's closer to zero, and negative four six is further from zero. So if you remember my trick that you put two dots by the bigger number, one dot by the smaller number, and then when you connect the dots, it makes your sign. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember my little trick? Okay. All right. So Jayla's saying that. Our next number line is broken up into fifths. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But when I start to number it, I always start at zero. And all I have to do is go down. So am I working with any positives here? No, it's just straight negative. So I've got negative one-fifth, two-fifths, negative three-fifths, negative four-fifths, then a whole. What's my next tick mark going to be? Negative, negative one and one fifth. Negative one and two fifths. Negative one and three fifths. Negative one and four fifths. And then I have two holes. And then I can graph it. Negative one and one fifth. Negative one and Four fifths. So if I have negative one and one fifth and I'm comparing it to negative one and four fifths, which one's bigger? Negative one and one fifth. Why? It's closer to the zero. It's closer to the zero. So two dots by the bigger number, one dot by the smaller, connect the dot. How do we go there? Okay, flip it over. All right, now we're doing decimals. All right, our decimals are divided into tens, right, or by tens. Is our number line divided into 10 spaces? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's skip counting by 10, right? So we've got negative 1 tenth, negative 2 tenth, negative 3 tenth, 4 tenth, 5 tenth. Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. If I plot negative eight tenths and negative two tenths. Which one's going to be smaller or less? The negative eight, eight. The negative eight tenth because it's furthest to the oh, yeah. left and it, or and it's further from zero. So I have negative eight tenths compared to negative two tenths. Eight tenths eight. is smaller and negative two tenths is 
because it's closer to zero. <coughs> All right, this number line's real interesting. It's like got big tick marks and little tick marks. Do you remember yesterday when we had the grids, how we had the tents, the rods, and then the rods were cut into little squares, which were hundreds? That's basically what we've done here in this number line. There's ten, 10 spaces in all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten spaces. So each of the big tick marks represents a ten. So like this is negative two and one ten. Negative two and two ten. Because we're starting at negative two. We're going to negative three. And so this is negative two and three tenths. Two and four tenths. Two and five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Between each tent are ten more tiny spaces. It's probably hard to see on your paper, but there's teeny little little tick marks. You see the teeny little tick marks between there? There's ten of those. So when our tent is divided into ten spaces, those are called what? Hundreds. Ten divided by ten times ten is a hundred. So there's a hundred little tick marks. Okay. So like I'm not gonna be able to fill it all in, but like this one right here would be negative two and one hundred. The next one would be what? Negative two and two hundred. And then negative three and three hundred negative okay so if i wanted to plot negative two and four hundredths where would it be the fourth dot where you were so the fourth one between negative two and negative one tenth right so one two three four and then we have negative two and four tenths which one is further from zero? Negative two and four tenths. So negative two and four hundredths, is it greater than or less than negative two and four tenths? All right, which one is, we just said negative two and four tenths is further from to the left, right? So that makes it smaller. If it's further to the left, left is less. So it's smaller. So the negative two and four hundredths is greater than negative two and four tenths. The one further away from zero is less. So negative two and four tenths is further from zero. It's less. That's what we said. That's what we got up there. Okay. Turn the page. We're almost there. All right, we're comparing here. I have, in case you need it, I have provided the fraction tiles for you and the decimal grids for you to be able to compare. Now, one of the problems though with this is you're not going to be always have fraction tiles with you and decimal grids with you. So you're going to have to figure out another way to compare. 
when you're talking about fractions, in order to compare fractions easily, they've got to have the same denominator. So looking at number four, do they have the same denominator? No. No. So we've got to make them have the same denominator. And the easiest way to do that is go, to go from smaller to bigger. Okay? So five is obviously smaller than ten, so I'm going to try and make my five get to ten. What do I have to do to my five to get to ten? Times two. Times two. Whatever I do to the bottom, i got to do to the top. So now I'm looking at negative six-tenths being compared to negative seven-tenths. Which one is further from zero? Seven. You've got to think about it on a number line. So here's zero, okay? I've got negative one tenth, negative two tenth, negative three tenth, negative four tenth, negative five tenth, negative six tenth, negative seven tenth. Which one's further away? Seven tenth. So that's what makes it the less or the least or the smallest. So one dot by the smaller, two dots by the bigger. Connect your dots. Hey, hey. So like number five, can we just straight compare those two things? No. Can we compare four ninths and one third? No. No. What do they have to have? The same denominator. Same denominator. Common denominator. Which one are we going to change? The three. The third. So we're going from one third and we want to make it into ninths. What do I have to do to three to get a nine? Times three. So one times three is? So instead of negative one third, we have negative three ninths. Which one's going to be further to the negative left? Four negative four ninths. Good. You can still do the same thing when you have mixed numbers, like in number six. Are the denominators <coughs> the same? No. No. So we got to make them the same. Which one are we going to change? One and one half. So we're going to change one half and we want it to have a fourth denominator. What do you do to two to get it to four? Times two. So one times two is two. So I have two four. So instead of being negative one and a half, it's negative one and two four. Which one is further away from zero and further to the left? The three fourths. Good. So that's the left. We're talking about decimals. All right, we've got twenty-five hundred and twelve hundred. Which one is going to be further from zero? Oh, we're talking. We're talking about eight, number eight. This one right here. Negative 25. Negative 2500. The way I have to look at this with decimals, guys, and comparing decimals is money. Which one do I owe more money to if I'm owed 25 cents or owe 12 cents? 25. 25. That's worse, right? Yes. And worse is less. So I'm further away from having a positive amount of money. So look at number nine. I have six dollars and ten cents, or I have negative four dollars and seventy cents. Which is worse to have, negative six dollars and ten cents, or negative four dollars and seventy cents? Negative four dollars. Which is worse, ne to owe somebody negative six dollars instead of owing somebody negative four dollars? So negative six and one tenth is going to be further away from zero. So it is. Less than. And then negative nine. Alright. We have negative three and nine tenths or negative three and nine hundredths. You can add a zero here. So we got three dollars and ninety cents or three dollars and nine cents. Which is worse to owe somebody? Ninety. So then it less than. All right, I've got negative 22 cents or negative 66 cents, which is worse? 
negative 66. I've got negative $4.63 or negative $4.36, which is worse. Okay. That's all for today. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. That's all for today. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you start working on some of those IXL. You may listen to music while you work on them today. Um, let's start with Q1. Three through five, and then seven.